Deborah North, one of the biggest stars in India today. She shot to fame in 2006 with her debut film, Gangster. And in less than a decade, she's established <coughs> herself as one of the leading actresses in Bollywood. Her choice of roles has redefined the stereotypical Indian film heroine. Let's welcome Gangana. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Shabnam. First of all, Kangana, I'd like to take you back to your childhood. Tell me about your story. What were your expectations growing up as a young girl uh, in your family, in your village? Uh, uh, well, the thing is, uh, in India, uh, it's a matter of fact that a girl child is seen as a liability. And uh, probably the only expectation is that uh, you grow up to uh, you know, be a presentable young woman who can get a decent spouse. <laughs> That's not much of an expectation, but yeah. <laughs> so what were you like as a child? Oh, pain, I'd say. <laughs> I wasn't a child that uh, an Indian parent would like to have. I was quite rebellious. And uh, I'd, uh, I'd, I didn't see myself as... Uh, I guess my family saw. I didn't see myself as a liability. I didn't see myself uh, as someone who is, you know, just whose purpose of life is just to find a, a good enough husband who can take care of her. I saw myself as much more than that. You said rebellious. What kind of things did you do as a child? Um, I, I think I was quite confident of myself and. Uh, uh, I had a mind of my own. I, uh, I liked the fact that my father had a lot of expectations from my brother, and uh, I wanted to, uh, I probably wanted to be that person who he could be proud of and who could, uh, you know, who could be her own hero. So, yeah, that led to uh, many incidences, including uh, my running away from my house, I guess. Before we come to that, just wanted to ask you a little bit more about your family. Was it a very traditional family? Was, uh, was there a lot of, uh, you know, the, the male members of your family, mm -hmm. were they treated with favoritism? Um, yes, I won't say it was an exceptional Indian family. That is pretty much how it is everywhere, where, uh, you know, you, you grow up in a very, very protective environment. Uh, which can sometimes lead to a little bit of suffocation also. You know, it can just uh, be a little too protective sometimes. Um, were your family sort of like, f uh, they had favoritism towards your brother? Yeah, like I said, in India, uh, you know, a woman is, uh, a girl child is seen as a liability, so naturally it, they, they did, uh, they aren't, a girl child isn't that celebrated for sure. So what eventually pushed you to leaving home? Uh, like I said, that quest, that understanding of your own self, that, uh, that confidence that you carry in yourself, that you know, you're a lot more than people think you are, and you want to, you want to prove that, and you want to find yourself, and, um, and you want to uh, you know, be a lot more than, than you're believed that you, know, you are. So I probably that quest. It can't have been easy, though. Yes, uh, I, I've struggled for 10 years. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's quite long. What was the opposition like then when, when you made that decision to leave home? Well, my parents gave me an easy option that if, if you are going to you know, go your way, so there's the highway <laughs> and you can probably expect no funds and no support, which I think was uh, legitimate because, you know, I think... That was a fair option. Was the one particular incident that led to you leaving home? You know, your father was quite angry with you. Uh, yes, I, I think I left. I, I just refused to go to school. And I'm like, I can't do science. I probably, I don't want to be a doctor. And, and he's like, then what would you be? And I'm like, I don't know. So he's like, don't you think you should? I said, give me a year and I would find out. And he's like, I have no money to spend on these sort of hobbies of yours. And I'm like, sounds fair. So you left home yes. and you went to a big city like Mumbai. Mm -hmm. What was that like when you first arrived there? 
Uh, no, no fairy dream or story, nothing like that. It was quite harsh. And, uh, uh, you know, I was nothing like I am today. I couldn't speak a word of English. And uh, in England, people might be understanding of that, but in Bombay, they're not very forgiving. <laughs> if you don't uh, speak English, how do you expect to work in Hindi films? Uh, <laughs> well, that, that was an obstacle, I'd say. You overcame that obstacle, but you overcame many obstacles because it wasn't easy to establish yourself. What, what did you want to do the minute that you arrived in Mumbai? Did you think, I want to be an actress, or did you have to go through various stages like, uh, you know, modeling? Oh, yes, various stages, various auditions. I ended up sleeping on the pavements, and uh, I didn't have food to eat. And my father would call, he's like, so did you learn your lesson? I'm like, no, you better get ready to learn yours. <laughs> so, it took way too long, and I think <laughs> for him to learn his lesson 10 years, he's like, okay, fine. Uh, but I think I finally made my point clear. But yes, it was just one of those uh, ordinary struggling stories where you're, uh, you know, there's a string of incidences or accidents, you know, one after the other, one worse than the other, and then you're like, you know, am I in a bad dream or it's just... You know, so, so, yeah. You're known for being very honest and very outspoken to the media. You're a great role model for the modern, independent Indian woman who goes against the traditional norms. How important is that for you? Well, honestly, I really don't know how to be any other way. I mean, I'm, I, I, find, I find a lot of pride in being who I am. And that was the case from my childhood. Like, my, like I said, my parents saw me as someone else. They saw me as someone who was a liability, but that didn't change my understanding of my abilities and myself. And when I came to Mumbai, they saw me as this village woman who had a weird accent and weirder appearance, I guess. But I didn't see myself like that. I, I thought of myself a lot more than just, I, I am a lot more than my appearance or my age or my color or my hair. And that is how I saw myself. And it, It'll never change, and why would I want to hide that? I, I let that, that be there. You know, for people, sometimes they find it too much. They sometimes they like it. I mean, that's just the way I am. What are expectations for girls now compared to when you were growing up? And that wasn't a very long time ago, was it? <laughs> um, I think uh, times have changed a little bit, not much. This generation isn't as bad as our generation, you know, when I was growing up. Uh, but I'd say in India, we have a lot of work to do, and we need a lot more uh, role models which young women can follow and parents can follow, where, where they have people they would like to, uh, you know, get inspired with their stories and their journeys. Uh, but definitely, with literacy rate going higher, with the women actively participating in the progress of the nation, working and stepping out of the houses, things have changed, and there's a lot of confidence uh, that has come in, but we're still nowhere close to the developed nations, for sure. So things have changed a little bit. Do you think the focus is shifting away from marriage, say, and, and are girls able to focus on careers? Um, I won't say that. I'm, I mean, being in my place, who, who's a successful actress, and um, you know, and in, in a working in a in an urban India, whatever you might may call it, uh, where I'm taking my job and at my workplace is just taken as a hobby. You know, I, I come across people who like, what do you need money for? And I'm like, why are you making a movie? So, so, so I, I can see the challenges which rest of the women must be going through, you know, and, and I know of my friends who are married and, and every time they get married, their, their husband's job is the priority, you know, so sometimes they have to even quit their jobs just because they have to prioritize their husband's uh, work situations and maybe problems. Do you think it's particularly worse in your industry because there is this perception that uh, in the Bollywood film industry, women are taken for their looks rather than talent? Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to admit it, but it is... 
uh, uh, I'll get bashed there. You know, she went there and she said that. Uh, but uh, but it is true that do, they do objectify women. Bollywood films do objectify women, and uh, uh, not all of them, some of them at least. Sexism and misogyny against women uh, is an issue that all patriarchal societies have to deal with. Yes. And this is particularly close to you because it was reported that your sister was the victim of an acid attack. Right. What can be done to combat this widespread gender crime? Um, I don't know. I think I can just go on about it. But we, we first of all, as society, as people, it's why to single out India. That is the problem everywhere. Where um, you know, feminine uh, as an emotion, feminine as a quality, it could be kindness, compassion is seen as a weakness where it is not. You know, it's just not women, it is just not uh, restricted to women, even to children, to men who, are, who tend to display these emotions. They are seen as uh, weaker beings, you know, and that is not the fact. We need to change that mentality. We need to respect uh, uh, the feminine as an emotion and not transpress and crush it, but to love and uh, to value it. And the history is witness that in the past, if anything that could conquer uh, the darkest and the deepest corners of a human soul, that has been feminine. It has been compassion, love, and that is the only way to penetrate the darkness, light, not anger or or you know, one of your uh, very aggressive emotions. So the, the tendency of human beings to see feminine as a, as a weaker emotion, that is what has to be changed. So when you see a beautiful woman and you can't acquire her, you want to destroy her. You know, so that needs to, that needs to be changed. And um, like I said, it's just not about, it's not just a women problem, it is a problem of the world. Can Bollywood help in that? Oh uh, yes, uh, I think cinema is a beautiful medium. It reaches out to millions of people, uh, and uh, it, through films we can we can give ideas out there. We can give uh, we can you know implant ideas in people's brains or mindsets, which can uh, grow into significant things, you know, and which can bring about significant changes. Because of what you've been through, and you've stood up for yourself. What are your thoughts about what happened to Jyoti Singh, the 23-year-old medical student who was raped and killed on a bus in Delhi? Well, the thing is, uh, a lot has been spoken about that. And uh, a criminal is a criminal. A criminal doesn't have a religion or a nationality, do they? They, they, they're not even humans. They're not even entitled to be humans. So if you see, uh, you know, their tendencies, they probably would fit in animal kingdom, and animals don't have religions. So uh, why to seek be criminals as uh, people who belong to a certain, um, you know, race or creed or religion? No, they don't have, they're not even humans. So, so there, there should be strict laws for animals like that, and they should be behind the bars and not left open in the open like that to damage uh, humans, I guess. That particular case received a lot of attention around the world. Do you think things have changed for women? Things have changed for women. Have things changed for women since then? Is it safer for women to go out there? How do you guarantee that, uh, you know, how, how, how can you guarantee something like that? I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say uh, that anyone can guarantee that sort of, uh, though I would love to live in a perfect world like that, but, uh, but we, can only, we can only hope and try and our sincere endeavors could hopefully lead us there, but it would be absolutely wrong if we tell our children that, okay, now we think it's you know, completely a crime-proof world that we are a part of and now go out and do what you like. Um, I don't think that's achievable. I probably, in my little understanding of the matters, I I think that's that's a little impractical to hope. Yeah. But there are a lot of women in India that are reluctant to report crimes like that. Yeah, that is the. I think that is a. Uh, that is very. Uh, that, that is the, the, the sad part, that as a woman, you feel responsible and you're held responsible for an incident like that. And 
um, again, that comes from the fact that you, your birth as a girl child is not celebrated. It, if it's not a tragedy to, to a family, it's definitely a setback. So when you start from a point like that, it's very hard to find pride in your own self, confidence in your own being and in your own actions. So probably everything that you do is wrong. So even if you get teased or you get uh, molested, is probably was your uh, fault and you were wrong. So I think that mentality has to change just so that these people can report and they can identify the animals we just spoke about because they roam around everyone, everywhere. And uh, it's not just in, uh, you know, not in, in, in every class. The crimes happen in, in all classes, you know. Coming back to Bollywood, what is the future for female actresses? Are they going to be taken seriously? They're going to be taken seriously. <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't think we need anyone's approval about you know, what we do as actresses. I feel it's a lot more important for women to accept themselves as opposed to others accepting them. You can't be hoping to get others' approval on what you do. Um, when I work in a film, I'm not seeking anyone's approval, you know, so, because they always start as, mm-hmm, and I'm like, yeah, it is good, it's great, and they're like, yeah, it is good. So you've got to be confident of who you are, you know, and uh, you can't really always, because others' opinion of you will always shift, their perspective will keep changing. Like I said, when I started out, they dismissed me like, uh, like a nobody. And, you know, today I am who I am because my understanding of myself never changed. So as women, we don't have to hope that we get our due. We need to get up and get it ourselves. <laughs>